the grower at home, you're watching this video, what you want to know is the 600 watt LED that we're going to test. What is its true comparison? Is it to a thousand watt? Well, the manufacturer would like to say that information, but let's just say, let's compare it to something that's more accurate. Comparing an apple to an orange is always not an easy situation because they're quite dynamically different. So let's take a wattage lamp that's a 660 watt HPS. So it's a 600 watt ballast overclocked to 660 watts and compare that to the Lumigro 650 at 650 watts to tr give you a true apple to apple comparison. And then all we need to discuss is the quality of light and the intensity because that's going to equate to your flower production as well as your quality. Yep. Steve has done some amazing tests with the Lumigro products. We did a video with the Lumigro Generation 1 products a few years ago, some, one of our most watched videos on the web, and we've had the opportunity of taking their new commercial units and the 650 watt unit and did some really cool comparison tests. And if you like our videos, if you would like to know about the newest, latest and greatest equipment coming out in the market and see it field tested firsthand by ourselves, click this button here and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Steve, can you tell us a little bit about the test that you just completed? I definitely can. I, I'm more than happy to tell you guys about everything that I found. I had a lot of fun testing these units as I have with a lot of our other units on the market. However, the Lumigros are the main ones that stood out to me because they're unique. You know, everyone is familiarized with fluorescence. Everyone's familiarized themselves with HIDs. Now, LED's been a hot topic. However, most LEDs that are on the market are fixed. You have a fixed spectrum. Lumigro is the first one to come about that has a patented technology that you can dial out the red, white, and blue spectrums. So I thought this was huge, especially because we used a spectrometer so we could actually diagnose the whole spectrum all the way from 400 to 700 nanometers and actually outside those ranges but between 400 and 700 is where PAR is measured, and so that's what we made our main focus. The goal of this test was to take an existing unit most growers have at the 600 watt level, which is a 600 watt HPS, and compare it to the Lumigro 650. Now what we've seen by LED companies, which a lot of growers have turned off to LEDs because of this, is they state the fixtures at 1,000 or 600, but yet the fixture runs half that. And you ask the LED company, why do you call it 1,000 or 600? Because it's an equivalent. Well, how do you compare apples to apples when you don't have an equivalent wattage of two different types to compare them accurately with each other? So that's what we did in this test. Yep. We took Lumigro, which actually properly identifies their fixtures, 650 watt fixture, 650 watts, mm -hmm. and compared it to a 660 watt setting of a 600 watt ballast running a standard HPS. Mm -hmm. Which HPS bulb did you use? So the bulb we decided to test it up against was the Hortolux Super HPS. It's made by Eye Lighting, and it seems to be the industry standard as far as high pressure sodium bulbs. That is a great lamp. I completely agree with it. It's a quality it. lamp. And what we wanted growers at home to know was how this LED would work in difference to their similar wattage HPS. And so that's why we went ahead and we decided to do it on the overclock feature, the super lumens feature. Some growers at home, they're watching this video and they're like, well, what about the heat difference? You know, of course, we did that test for you as well if you watched our other video. Uh, what did we notice? It was about a 15 to 17, 18% difference between yeah. the different Lumigro fixtures versus a similar output uh, HID fixture, like an HPS or Metal Highlight. And um, that's, you know, a decent amount of savings, but let's just say um, it's still under 20%. Um, so we, you know, like to quantify LEDs as great savings for a number of reasons. Maybe heat, not so much. Um, if you have maybe a 15 degree difference, not, not I'm sorry, a 15, if you have a 15% difference, not a huge amount. Uh, but where do, the, where do we see the LEDs really shining? The big thing, like you said, is we keep the heat completely out of the conversation. Where the savings on the LED fixtures is going to be in the bulb replacement. As many commercial growers as well as hobbyist growers know, the average time to swap out your HID bulbs is six months. Some people push it to a year, and for some reason, some people push it beyond that. However, LEDs, that's what LED stands for, light emitting diode. The diodes are good for thousands of hours of use, and so that's mostly where you're going to see the return on investment. It's going to be on your bulb exchange. It's a 15 to 17% difference, and so that's where you're also gonna see it, is in your HVAC savings. But like I said, we try to keep that out of the conversation. It's mostly gonna be on your bulb exchanges. And the reason why we keep that out of the conversation is because though the fixtures are actually putting out different heat amounts, there is a slight different intensity. Um, and the, let's just say that the HVAC still have a slight greater intensity. But the truth is, the LEDs have the ability to focus in in spectrums that HPS can't. So you're gonna get a lot of that chlorophyll A, you're gonna get a lot of that 420 to 440 spectrum, that UVA and UVB, that you don't traditionally get with an HPS. Exactly. So really, the Lumigro 650 versus an HPS 600 watt or 660 watt setting, you're really getting a better quality of light with the LED, but you're not getting the total blend of light that you're getting from the HPS, which let's admit, there is some waste of light there. Yeah, there definitely is. When most people look at the side of the box, you're seeing a spectral distribution that really just shows the PAR light. 
And so unfortunately, the viewer out there, the customer that's paying for that, they're getting a lot of useless power, a lot of useless heat that your plants just simply can't assimilate. And so that's the cool thing about diodes as well, is like we, as like we mentioned, they're specific on their wavelength that they throw. And so that's the only way that you can truly achieve a proper spectrum and enhance the spectrum that you are currently already using. But you, the grower at home, what you know your dying question is, which one yields better? Right. And that's what we want to show you today. And that's why we're comparing a 660 watt fixture HPS to a 650 watt fixture LED, because that's the true performance test, is which one with similar wattage outputs, it creates more flower and creates a better quality flower, of course, for those guys that are know that that's an important part of the flower production as well. Let's go ahead and get to the test and take a look at our findings. So this is a Hortelux 600 watt Super HPS, Super Premium Bulb, ran at 660 watts on the ballast, and we did a direct head comparison with the top quality LED on the market, mm -hmm. which is the Lumigro 650. Um, so let's take a talk a little bit about what we found with this testing, because this is a really exciting test. So the first thing we did is we want to show you guys exactly what the Hortelux does at the 660 watt super lumen setting. Um, we decided to do this at a, at a standard 24 inches above the canopy, or in this instance, 24 inches above our cosine receptor. And the LumaGro does operate pretty nicely around that 24 inch distance. So we just figured this would be the best head to head comparison. So the Hortelux HPS at the 660 watt setting gave us an average of 747.98 micromoles. 660 watt HPS versus true 650 watt LED. What's the difference? So the difference actually is a little bit higher in the Lumigro. It's just just slightly. The Lumigro 650 actually averages over the 25 points to 771.97 micromoles. The Lumigro has a much more focused beam, has a much more focused footprint. Along the outer edges, it drops off just slightly, um, but not too drastic. I mean, when you compare it to the HPS, HPS is a little more broad, it covers every inch of the footprint pretty well. The output was actually greater with the LED that was 10 watts less in consumption. Right. That's huge. And we're not at look, all looking at the wavelengths of life, we're looking at the total light output. So it's not all the wavelengths um, individually, but combined. It's the max response the plant's gonna get out of the PAR spectrum in specific. So as you can see, um, 400 to the 440 spectrum in the blue, and about 600 to the 660 spectrum in the red. And those are really where the maximum uh, plant production is achieved out of the PAR spectrum. So we see the Lumigro is highly light efficient with a well-defined spectral distribution that's within those specific spectrums that are necessary to grow what our growers are intending to grow. The HPS has a broad spectrum, but it has a bunch of wasted light, though it does still also produce great flowers. So in these two graphs, you can just see, uh, it's a really good visual. We can actually see on the bar graph that the Lumigro is slightly higher, very similar. But we wanted to show you guys was the spectral distribution. Um, you might be wondering, gosh, that spectrum looks very broad on the HPS as compared to the LED. Uh, but the thing about the LED is it's so specific. All the light that it's throwing out is all consumable by plants. And that's why the PAR is higher. The way we conduct these tests are completely different from what you would see from other companies on the market that do light testing. We actually do it from the plant standpoint, mm -hmm. not specifically from the lamp standpoint. So you're gonna look at other companies that might be doing light tests and what they're doing is a circular grid or they're doing uh, maybe a, um, you've even seen like a star shaped grid. And that's really to, to benefit the light output, to tell you where the best placement is for light Output. but we don't care about that we're, we're growers we're talking to growers what they care about is what are the plants getting right and so our light test is done conducted a little differently where we choose over a five by five footprint specifically or even down to a three by three is a point of measurement for every foot in the middle of that uh, square foot really representing the plants that will be under the light exactly and so in this measurement how many points did we do so in these two, we did 25 points. These were done on a five by five grid. And you can see by these pictures, you're gonna see a lot of X's and that's exactly where the center of each the center of each square foot is. And it does, it represents a particular plant. And so that way you can see exactly where on your footprint pattern, where each plant's gonna thrive. Um, you know, what the, output, what the output is gonna be in that given square foot. Now I know some of you growers that maybe are a little newer, you're probably gonna listen to that. You're like, I don't have 25 plants under my, my light. Well, that's not important. It's just important that it's 25 points of measurement. Right. Some plants will have multiple heads, but it's just giving us a representation of where the light is falling on the floor based upon a square foot. And so for you growers at home, you're looking for the best fixtures out of this test. You obviously know which one it is. It's the LED. And for those of you growers that are looking to get this Lumigro at the best possible price, especially if you're 
buying in high quantity because we do uh, commercial lighting sales up to, we have pricing levels that are specific up to a thousand fixtures, but of course we'll sell down to ones and twos. Um, give us a call at Monster Gardens because we're not only the experts in regards to LEDs, but lighting in general for the horticulture use in the industry. Thank you.